Welcome to Pick Up A Podcast. Today, my guest is Michael John Petty of the podcast Pierce in the Darkness. Hey, Mike, how are you today? Doing well, Kurt. How are you doing? I'm not too bad. A bit of behind the scenes. We've uh, we've been talking for the past two hours on another podcast, haven't we? Yeah, a little bit. I thought, because I was speaking to um, to you today, I thought that it would be an, a perfect opportunity to dis- discuss your, your podcast. Now, my first question would be to you is... What got you into podcasting in the first place? How did you get started on your podcasting journey? Where did that come from and and how long have you you been podcasting for? So I've podcasted for about uh, going on eight years now. Um, I started in October of 2010. A friend of mine named Dan Schmidt, um, who was he was kind of like an older brother to me. He was a mentor to me. He he was into film growing up and which got me into film. Uh, I actually went to school for film and just graduated in May. So um that's kind of where my my life path has gone. But he, after after he graduated college, started a podcast called Across the Airwaves with a friend of his, where every week they would get together and talk about the TV shows that they loved. And this is around the time where podcasting just wasn't totally big yet. It hadn't really blown up. There were a few podcasts that talked about television shows, but not like a million like there are today. And Across the Airwaves talked about a little bit of everything. You know, they talked about Supernatural. They talked about Chuck, Smallville, Fringe, um, you name it. We probably talked about it at one point or another. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, really loved it. Did it um, for about six years with Dan. And we did a bunch of spin off podcasts. We did one all about DC Comics shows and movies. We did one all about um, one all about Arrow for a long time. Um, we also did one about – what was the other one? Oh, th- there's another one that was just random topics, which was a lot of fun. A lot of, a lot of mm. geeky, nerdy topics like comic books and movies, TV, all that. And so those were obviously a little less structured than the Across Arrows show was every week. But nevertheless, we, we kept doing it every week, and sometimes we'd do multiple shows a week and uh, did it all throughout my high school years. Uh, I started high school in fall of 2010. So right around the time I actually started podcasting, I started high school as well and did that all the way through college for the most part until about 2016, um, Dan passed away suddenly and he had muscular dystrophy. So it was something that we had seen coming for a long time, but it was very sudden at at the time because uh, he just immediately fell sick and passed away within, within a week. I had actually been out of the country at the time. I was in I was in Rome when I got the news and I was actually coming home the next day. And so um, we went to the funeral and his his host, Nico, who he had started the podcast with initially, uh, came as well. And we just we decided that we needed to figure out what to do with the podcast. And so we said that we would go on one more year, uh, that we'd commit to one more year to do it in his memory. And we did it another year. And it just it turned out to be really taxing and re- just a lot of work that Dan was able to do um, because he was home all day. Um, we, yeah. we weren't able to do in the same way. Um, Nico had a full-time job. I was still going to school and I had a job. Um, so that was just, it was very difficult from that aspect. So instead, after, after that year, summer of 2017, um, I think it was in July, we had our last episode of Across the Airwaves and then we shut down, shut down the podcast after, se- after that show was on for seven years, which I, right. is a pretty good run for a podcast, all things considered. And, and that was really sad, but it was time and we needed to break and we needed a break from podcasting. So fast forward another year and this, to this past summer and I just, it was on my heart to podcast again, but I wanted to talk about something that wasn't just television, wasn't just movies. I wanted to talk some about something that was really impactful to me in my everyday life and could be impactful to others in their everyday lives. And so Piercing the Darkness was kind of born out of that. And my brother and I kind of started a podcast uh, called Petty Thoughts. Uh, clear <laughs> clear uh, pun on our last name there. <laughs> but, uh, and, and trust me, they are pretty petty, uh, which we only have like one episode out right now. And, and that's just more. We do it maybe once a month when we get bored and we just want yeah. to re- record in front of a microphone and see what comes out of it. Um, but, but Piercing the Darkness, I do every week. And obviously, I've been involved now, uh, as you are, with the X-Cast yeah. and with the uh, – the we made this podcast network. So we just recorded an episode today of the Times Now podcast, the Millennium podcast, which was a lot of fun. I loved recording with you. It was great. I hope we get to do it again. And, and, and so just podcasting has kind of come back into my life. And it, I've come at it more from a different perspective of I'm not doing it just to spend time with Dan anymore. I'm not doing it just um, to talk about these things that we share in common. I'm doing it now because I want to talk about the things that not only matter to me but that – 
um, I, I really do truly believe matter to a lot of other people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's a good thing for for you to do. I think it's probably worth while having that break, really, because uh, I've I lost my brother when I was um, I was maybe it's maybe five six years ago now. Um, he was twenty eight and I was thirty two, and mm. um, you know it, it takes a while. It takes a while for for things like that to really kick in. Even though you know, even though you go through the grieving process and all that type of thing, and you know, yep. after after a while, you think you're over it. But then it's only when you look back and, and you kind of can look at it objectively that you see, well, I was actually in a quite a bad state there, or or, or what you were doing. And and you know, it's it's great that you've managed to get your mojo back, and and especially the fact that the way you've said there that um, it's it's a personal thing for you, but also as well, it's um, you, you're giving out as well because of the the type of podcast that it is that you know you're able to hopefully catch people um who are like-minded and will um you know we resonate with 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 those podcasts um i mean the petty one sounds great i mean i think that a lot of podcasts when they are kind of unscripted and just you know two guys two girls a guy and a girl uh, whoever it may be get into a room and just just have a chat i think some of them some of the things that come out will be fantastic i really wished i really wished that you know when i was at school and finishing my sixth form which is what we have over here in the UK, um, which would have been between 1996 and 1998, that, that podcasting was a thing because I can guarantee that I would have been involved in something like that because it, my, my tech geek in me would, wouldn't let me not. <laughs> um, so I just I, I just missed that. So, you know, fast forward 20 years and I'm, I'm finally getting there. Um, so so you, you mentioned about your Pierce in the Darkness podcast. Um, it is a podcast on faith. And I mean, I will uh, admit that I'm a, I am an atheist and, it is uh, an indifference to me when I look at religion in general, but that doesn't preclude me from from getting into the bottom of of how other people feel and and and, and be curious about other people. So, um, so you've said that you, why you've started the podcast now. Um, what sort of angle are you coming at from um, with regards to piercing the darkness? So is is it? Are you having a, a set um, idea in mind? Do you have a set idea? Do you have um, a format or is it just going to differ from um, week to week? Because I noticed that you've got an episode on signs and you've had a a preacher come on recently and obviously the format's slightly different. Is is it going to be something that, say for example, you've got, um, you did the episode on signs, are you going to be doing more film podcasts on with regards to faith? And Yeah, I think, no, that's a wonderful question and I, I really appreciate you taking the time to actually listen to a few of the episodes and, or at least research into what I am doing um, so that you can come at it from that way. I think for the most part, this podcast is really, it's really going to depend week by week um, because there, there's some weeks where I just have something I want to say or, or something that I, be, I believe the Lord has been teaching me that I want to be able to share with others. Um, y- if you notice, I, the two of the episodes that I've done out of the six, I believe there's six now. Yeah. Um, they don't have any guests and it's just me. And it's, it, those are more teaching podcasts or more, um, we're digging into what the Bible actually has to say about a sp- specific topic, and I'm getting at it from a more personal personal aspect. But then you also mentioned that I had the episode with the preacher, Keith Darrell, um, and him and I talked about his experiences uh, with faith and his experiences going to various college campuses around uh, the, the country, around America, preaching preaching the gospel. And so obviously that's all different. And then there's the first episode where my brother and I talk about science and how that relates to faith and how we responded to that film. Really, it's going to depend week by week, I think, because because quite frankly, if I if I say that this is the formula and this is how we're going to do things, eventually I'm either going to get bored, I'm going to get frustrated, or I'm going to feel like I'm trying too hard to be regimented. Yeah. And instead, I kind of want this free flowing form of whatever the Holy Spirit wants me to do this week, that's what I'm going to do. And that's kind of the the idea. That's kind of the mindset that I'm coming at it from. Whatever I, Whatever is on my heart to talk about this week and whoever I want to bring on with me and whoever, however I want to talk about it, mm. that that's how it's going to be um, week by week. And this week, I don't actually know what I'm going to be talking about completely right. yet. And that's kind of the cool thing is I don't like I don't premeditate a lot of the topics. Um, sometimes I do because sometimes you have to. But a lot of times I don't, and a lot of times I just go into it like, okay, what happened this week that we can talk about and look at from a spiritual angle and a spiritual perspective, and how can I better point that 
to Jesus Christ? And how can I better point that to my faith and my experience? And how can I share that with others so that they can maybe help interpret their experiences? That would, as you say, I mean, having a, a regimented way of doing things that, you know, it could get quite boring, but I quite like the, the, the idea that, you know, whatever that comes to you um, because of your faith that, you know, you what you'll be putting out is is kind of true to you, really, which which is a good, which is a great thing. What is your background regarding your youth and your religion, and how did that all all formulate in the in the younger years? Yeah, so I was born uh, to a two parent household, my mom and my dad, outside of Chicago. I I come from thirty five miles west of the city, so uh, a suburb called Saint Charles. I was born in the next suburb, Geneva, but I lived in Saint Charles all my life until I turned eighteen and moved out here to Montana which is where I am now, Bozeman, Montana. If anyone wants to come look me up and <laughs> we can hang out, that'd be great. Um, I was actually born into a non-Christian household. Right. Um, my, my parents had both kind of gone to church growing up, but they, they weren't really committed to their faith. Um, it was, it, in fact, they didn't really have any faith. Uh, it was kind of whatever they felt like doing, that's what they were going to do. And we grew up in a neighborhood with people around us who were Christians and my parents had friends and people in their lives who were Christians. Uh, the woman who essentially is my grandmother, because she took care of my grandmother who had Alzheimer's, um, and thus she became my grandmother as well. Um, she actually was a Christian as well. Because of all these influences in their lives and because of the things that they started seeing in their own lives, um, they actually came to saving faith in Jesus Christ. And my dad was an alcoholic before he was a Christian, and afterwards he wasn't. Um, so there was a really huge difference um, between before and after, and out of me and my four siblings, I'm the oldest, uh, I'm the only one who really remembers that. And so to me, it actually does make an impact. And to me, it actually does make a difference because I've seen the difference. Um, and that doesn't mean my parents are perfect. That doesn't mean my dad doesn't sometimes drink or fall back into drunken states at times. Like, obviously, mm -hmm. that's that's human nature. That's life. Um, but that's not who he is anymore. That's not his identity. And so growing up, my parents after after they became Christians, um, started teaching me that way and started showing me the changes in their lives. And I started seeing that and I said to myself that I wanted that. Um, I, I wanted to be that way. I wanted to be hopeful like that. I wanted to have faith in someone other than myself because <laughs> I can't really trust myself. And I wanted to love other people the way that I was told God loved me. Not only that, but I wanted to be loved by God too. So all, all that all that aside – I actually was in Christian school most of my life growing up um, from the time I was in third grade up until I went to college. And um, I went to college at a, at a secular state university, um, and that was my choice. I did not want to go to a Christian school. Um, unfortunately, I think that there's a lot of people in um, Christianity who are – are very hypocritical, and I think a lot of times they don't practice what they preach. And, I, you know, you see that anywhere. You see that everywhere. Um, and like, kind of like we talked about on the Millennium Podcast, people are people. Nobody is perfect. And so you can't, you can't just disregard the teaching. You can't just disregard the message. You can't disregard that because of a few people, a few bad eggs. And I kind of realized that and I recognized that. But at the same time, um, I wanted to go somewhere where I felt like I could actually make a difference, which is why I went to college at a, at a secular university. But growing up, I saw a lot of a lot of people around me who either had their lives changed because of Jesus, like completely radically changed, or were in such such states of just selfishness and, and despair, and they were just unhappy. Mm -hmm. um, they just weren't happy with where they were. And I think part of that is because Illinois is a terrible state <laughs> and because the suburbs of Chicago is not the funnest place in the world. Um, I, I, so I think part of it's that. But I also I could also recognize that there was, a, there was a spiritual need in a lot of people around me that just wasn't being met, uh, specifically people in my family that were outside of my immediate family. Okay. And um, I didn't. I just didn't want that to be me. I, I just felt the Lord's pull on my heart ever since I was a kid. I had a desire to go into filmmaking and to to make movies and tell stories. I mean, one of the things Jesus did was he told parables, and so people that wouldn't listen to his teaching, he just told parables that they essentially got the same thing. They just got it in the form of a story, and I think that's incredibly powerful. Um, I, stories are the way most most important, most big, most impactful messages I think are told, um, which is why I love film. I love television. I love music, I, books, comic books. I, I, I think it's, I think storytelling is an amazing method that I think a lot of Christians are not using. It just was always put on my heart as a child to go into that. And so, so my whole life, that's kind of what it was. Yeah. And I recognize that that was God's call on my life. 
everybody was always like, well, d- don't you want to do this? Don't you want to do this? And I was like, no, that's never been what it is. It has always been film. Yeah. Always. Since I was six years old, my mom says it was film. And she recognized that. And my dad recognized that. And they completely believe in me. And I'm so thankful for that. Um, a lot of people didn't. Now I've just graduated college with a degree in film. I'm working on a feature length film right now on writing a feature length film right now. And as well as two television pilots. And I think the Lord has really blessed me and put me in a situation, this situation for a reason. What's intriguing me is that when you went to college, you went to the secular college. Um, what what was that? What was that like? Was it was it just a, was it an easy introduction and no one really talked about your faith or did people find out about that and did you have any opportunities to discuss that with people while you were there? Did you see find any like minded people or did you find any challenges while you were there? And also, um, what was it like from from the filming point of view? What have you come out um, of following that degree? I noticed that you've you've obviously got some works in the pipeline. Where where are you going with with that at the moment? So my transition to college was actually really easy. Um, I had I had really no outside of being away from my family, which was very hard for me because I'm very much a, a homebody. I really love my family, and uh, you know I I get a lot of I get a lot of who I am from them. Um, and and that, that's a lot of people. That's not everybody, but that's a lot of people. So for me to be separated by them, with them still being in the suburbs of Chicago at the time and me being in Montana, that was very hard. Um, so from that standpoint, it was very hard, very hard. But from the standpoint of me just going into a secular a secular place, that wasn't, a, that wasn't a big deal at all. I love people. I've always loved people. Um, I, I love talking to everybody. I want to always hear about what's going on in other people's lives as opposed to talking about what's going on in my life, which when you, when you said, hey, do you want to come and talk about yourself on this podcast? I was like, uh, OK. <laughs> so I, I've always loved people. So that wasn't that wasn't a huge deal. Um, that wasn't a big deal at all. And I found that a lot of people, even if they didn't agree with me, like yourself, were willing to have the conversation about faith with me and willing to hear what I believe, why I believe it. And I had wonderful conversations with a lot of people over the last four years about my faith and about what I believe and why I believe what I believe and so on and so forth. And I did find a lot of like-minded people. I actually found a um, college ministry group that met every week that I started going to every week. And I also went to Bible studies through them almost all four years. And it was great. It was wonderful. um, And it helped me grow in my faith quite a bit. Interestingly enough, um, not everything was great and wonderful. Um, I actually went through a huge crisis of faith my first probably two and a half years of going to school where I just started questioning everything I had ever believed in. And it was it was incredibly weird. And I, I talked about this a little bit in um, in the episode Help My Unbelief of Piercing the Darkness that I did with my friend Tim. But but it was just it was incredibly odd because um, all of a sudden it wasn't that anybody was questioning my faith, my beliefs, um, because they weren't, because they were willing to listen and I was still willing to talk about it. But inside, I just, I, I was, I was, I started wondering and I started questioning and I, I truly do believe a lot of that was spiritual attack, but I also believe a lot of that was me just having to work through it myself. Um, Paul says in the book of Philippians that we must work out our own salvation through fear and trembling. And essentially what he means by that is we need to work out what we really believe and we need to do so in a way that's reverent to God um, and, and humble and not in a way that's prideful. And there are a lot of people that I went to school with in high school and middle school and elementary school in these Christian schools who were very prideful about their faith in a way that, in a way that just never sat well with me because I wondered in the back of my mind, I was wondered if their faith were actually put to the test, would they actually believe it? Yeah. Um, and, and actually, I was just talking about, with my brother about this uh, two nights ago when we were when we were driving. I said to him, I said, I wonder how many people from my graduating class are still following Christ. And I, I don't know. Truthfully, I don't know. And I actually am looking forward to my high school reunion because I want to find out <laughs> yeah. and I, I want to see what's going on in their lives. And I want to know how I can help. And I want to know what I you know, all of that. I just, again, love people. So it was a weird dichotomy between being really like really strong in my faith and really weak at the same time. It was kind of, it was kind of that idea of paradox, you know, Paul says in my, in my weakness, um, I am made strong. And it was, it was very much that. Well, I want to, I want to pick up on that actually, because I did listen to that episode. And um, when you said it was your deepest, darkest thoughts, some of those thoughts weren't your own. That helped you through from some of the doubts. 
can you ex- expand on that a little bit more? Um, I'm not all fair with with that that type of thing, you know, spiritualization of, of invading you and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So in in the book of Ephesians in the New Testament, um, Paul, the Apostle Paul, says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So so people are not our enemies um, as Christians. People. There's a lot of Christians who are very hateful. There's a lot of Christians or people who claim they're Christians, I should say, because I really don't believe a lot of them are truly, truly believers. Yeah. Um, I, I think if you really are, you're going to love people because that's what you're told to do. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I think a lot of people use religion as a tool to um, manipulate, and I don't think um, a lot of people who are like that are actually – are actually Bible believing Christians are actually following Christ. There's a difference between um, identi- There's a difference between being a fan of Jesus and following Jesus. I'll just put it that way. Yeah. So he says, our enemies are not flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and the rulers of this present darkness. Essentially, what he is saying is, is that there are spiritual powers. Um, the devil is real. Satan is real. He's a real person. He's not just an idea. He's not just this abstract idea of what evil is or concept or figurehead that says this is what evil is. Um, he's an actual real person, and Revelation says that he actually brought a third of heaven down with him, and a third of heaven, we don't know how many angels there are in heaven. So that could be billions of angels. That could be thousands. I, we don't know. We just know the number is a lot. All throughout the New Testament, you see Jesus healing people from, and his apostles, healing people from demonic oppression and demonic possession as well. Um, and one of my episodes, my brother and I talk about the difference between the two. And I think there's a lot of Christians today who don't recognize that we have spiritual enemies. And that's that's really hard for me because it's very clear in the Bible that we do. You know, I, I really do, again, believe that there is such thing as mental illness. I I, I really do. But I also think there is such thing as demonic influences on a person that masquerades as symptoms of mental illness. And I've seen that in my own life because, you know, depression isn't something that you can just snap out of. But when I had complete trust and faith in God and I prayed and I asked God to deliver me from a spirit of heaviness, I immediately felt relief. Mm. And that's not something that you can do with depression necessarily, but that is something you can do with a demonic entity because James says in the New Testament – Submit to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. So the whole evasive thoughts, invasive, I mean, thoughts thing um, Mm. is hard for a lot of people to understand and hard for a lot of people to believe. But I believe that our thoughts come from our our thoughts are either in line with two different things. They're either in line with in line with what God wants for our lives or in line with what the enemy, as in the demonic enemy, yeah. wants with our lives. And as Christians, you know, we, we have three things that we have to battle against. We have to battle against the flesh, so the old desires, the sinful desires of the heart, um, things that want, make you want to hate people, things that make you want to murder, um, sleep around, this, that. It doesn't matter. Mm. Um, the world, the, the concept of the world, the world that hates Jesus, and, and, you know, you can't deny that Christians have been persecuted in history. I mean, it still happens in certain countries today. And that's, that's something that we fight against too, not against the people per se, but against the mentality. And, and the third being uh, the devil and his demonic forces. And that's, that's the part that I think a lot of people have a hard time with um, because they don't see it. They don't, you know, we see it in our culture as um, like the exorcist, you know, we, that's, that's how we see view demonic possession or oppression or anything like that. Um, and that is an extreme, like that can happen. Like I have actually witnessed stuff like that with my own eyes, but that is not, um, the norm. Yeah, it's not the norm. It's not usually what happens. Um, in fact, you look back at Genesis three and you have Satan in the garden with Adam and Eve, and he's just, he's just there like having a normal conversation with them. It's, it's not a full on possession. It's not anything like that. It's just a normal conversation. And in the book of Job, Satan goes before God and says, you know, this guy, Job, you know, he, the only reason he loves you is because you've given him everything. And God is like, OK, so then take away everything except his life and we'll see if he still loves me. And Satan uses natural disasters such as tornadoes, such as, you know, storms and fire from heaven and all this crazy stuff to destroy everything Job has. And yet Job still praises God. It, it's just it's it's interesting. And in the, there are various ways that demonic forces can come at people. Mm. Um, and I don't think a lot of people recognize that. I think the best, the best example that I can give to anybody who um, is going to use something outside of, outside of scripture itself to understand this is C.S. Lewis's screw tape letters. I, I think that, and actually ironically the M- M- millennium episode, somehow Satan got behind me. Yeah. Um, I think those are both very good 
um, pictures into into that spiritual realm and into what I believe demons really do truly do and what scripture says they do. That's my favorite Millennium Darren Morgan episode. Oh yeah, it's it's one of my favorite episodes of television by far. Yeah. It's it's incredible. I love it. Yeah, I mean I love Darren Morgan anyway because um, Jose Chung's Smart Space is is my pretty much my Twitter handle anyway. Um, as Reinhard Muldrake, so it's um, yeah, but I loved I love Darren awesome. Morgan stuff. But Satan, somehow Satan got behind me. It was actually funny that when um, recording for Jose Chung, which is as we record this out next week, we talk a little bit about Satan got behind me on the Jose Chung episode, and Paige was quite surprised because she expected me to say Doomsday Defense would be my favorite um, episode of of that season um, from from a Darren Morgan point of view. And it wasn't. It was somehow Satan got behind me because I, I just, I love the the fact that it's got the four stories effectively on on how people are dealing with it and the way that Darren Morgan finishes a lot of his episodes, especially with that last demon, is um, is particularly um, haunting in a way, but also um, quite an, an interesting take on on what people desire and and how lonely he is. So I, I do. Yes, I think that's a, it's a great episode that, and it's definitely worth checking out for anyone who hasn't seen Millennium and you know has any any inkling on on what you're saying here. I think it was uh, without a doubt needs to see that episode. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful episode of TV. So we mentioned uh, about filming, and I, I know we haven't got onto that yet. We'll 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 pick that up just at the end of end of this one now, really. Okay. Um, so from a daily basis, how how does faith help you on, on a on a daily basis when you wake up to when you wake up and when you go to sleep at night, how, how, how do you perceive faith during the course of a normal average day? One of the first things I do every morning when I wake up is pray. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's how I start my day. It's, it's that. And I, and I read, um, a passage of scripture and that's, that's how I start my day every morning. And I pray, um, and this is more recently, this is actually something my mom brought to my attention that I have started applying. And I've actually since seen, seen a positive impact in, in my everyday life. But, um, I pray in the morning, I say, Lord, I commit to you my ways today. Please establish my thoughts and my plans. And there's a verse in, I believe it's Proverbs, that says, uh, if you commit your ways to the Lord, he will establish your thoughts. But in other translations, it says he will establish your plans. And so I just include both and say, Lord, please establish my thoughts and my plans as I commit my ways to you today. And that that's just how it starts. And throughout the rest of the day, I just do what I can to love on people. Um, whether it's at work, I listen to people who have problems, and it's kind of interesting. I've I've found in my life that people will confide in me and open up to me for no other reason than they know I genuinely care and will listen. Right. And that that's truly a gift from God because who I was before I I really became a Christian before I really got born again would not have cared. It would it would have been more about me. I, I'm I'm very much a different person from that standpoint, and so I I genuinely do care with what people are going through. And I do genuinely listen and they know that. And a lot of people ask me for advice because they know that I'm not going to lie to them. They know I'm not going to tell them what they want to hear, but what they need to hear. Right, yeah. And, and from that standpoint, and you know, that doesn't happen every day, but it does happen on the day to day. Sometimes just, you know, loving on people who don't feel loved or showing grace to people who everybody is frustrated with or hates, whether it's at work or whether it's in class or whether it's, you know, the person on the side of the road who gets honked at or yelled at. We have here in Bozeman, we actually have a huge, um, well, not a huge, but we have a good amount of homeless people. Right. And so sometimes it, sometimes it involves being there for them. And sometimes it involves bringing them, you know, lunch when, you know, nobody's been giving them anything all day. So it it can look very different depending on the day. It just yeah. ultimately is where the Lord leads my heart and what he puts on my heart to do and say say to people. I think even today, for example, you know, we recorded the Millennium podcast earlier which we've been referencing a couple of times. Yeah. So now I hope people listen to it. <laughs> yeah. um, it's it's not a back, it's not a backdoor pilot. We trust we, no. we, we trust our listeners. We're not we're not trying to push that podcast at all. Not not, a, not even a little bit. <laughs> um but but I even think about that and you know, God clearly had me here today talking with you about that episode for a reason. And, you know, it's something it's something small. But even at the end of the episode, you're like, you know, I, I like this episode a little more now that I understand it a little better. Yeah. And, you know, it, does that have anything to do with your, you know, your relationship to God or with God? No, not necessarily. Mm. But it doesn't mean at one point down the road, you might not look back and see something. Um, 
It doesn't mean that somebody else who listens to that podcast who actually is kind of wrestling with faith and wrestling with those questions won't hear us talking about it and talk about it from a faith, faith perspective and look at Frank Black's journey in that episode and even yours journey in that episode and see that connection to faith and recognize something in themselves. So, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I know when when I've made an impact on somebody and when the Lord has used me to do that. Yeah. And other times I'm not sure I will ever ever will know the side of eternity and i'm at peace with that because it's it's in him it's in his hands and he knows what people need better than i do so i just i just do it i just try and do what he tells me to do <laughs> fantastic um, so what this is this is like asking you for your favorite movie but what is your uh, <laughs> most important part of your faith what do you consider the most important part of of, of your faith overall so there's a verse and it's first corinthians thirteen thirteen, and it's it, it's in this whole chapter First Corinthians 13 is essentially all about all about love. The 13th verse says, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And in the King James, uh, the word love is replaced with charity. Um, I grew up on the King James, so that's, that's the reason I keep referencing it. Um, that's actually what I read on the day-to-day. -day. So for me, I, I don't know if it can be one thing. I, I think – I think on the day to day, the one great thing about faith is that it's not about me and it's not about what I can do because I can't be perfect. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's that concept or that idea that I don't have to be. I just have to trust in him and he will continue to sanctify my heart and he will continue to, you know, sanctify my mind. Uh, scripture says renew your mind according to the word of God. So, you know, just being in that every day and just renewing and refreshing. It, it, it is renewing and refreshing. Yeah. Um, and so that's a huge part. But the idea that, you know, faith, hope, and love are the most important things and the greatest of these being love, that's huge to me. Um, that's, that's super huge to me. And that's, that's, I think, really the most important part. You know, hope in the future, hope in what is coming, hope in who is coming, and hope in Hope in eternity. Ho don't hope in today. You know, hope that is seen is not hope. Um, having faith, which according to Hebrews, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of what isn't seen. So faith, a lot of people think faith is is just a set of doctrinal ideas or values or belief systems. And it's, it's really not. Really what faith is is trusting God, um, regardless of what everything around you says. It's, it's ultimately trusting God. And that's not to say that, you know, you have to have blind faith or that you can't have informed faith or that you can't use your reasoning or thinking skills or brain power. I think God gave us those things for a reason. You know, science is God's gift to man, I think, to help explain the things that he has made. Um, so I, I'm not I'm not saying that at all. I'm, I'm certainly not saying that blind faith is necessarily the way to go, but just trusting him in the daily things, you know, not being worried, not being anxious, be anxious in nothing, but with everything um, in prayer and supplication produce it. Present your requests to God, you know, yeah. um, and ultimately, again, the greatest of these is love. So just, you know, when Jesus was asked by the Pharisees and they said this to him to trip him up, but he gave a better answer than they could have even asked for. They asked him, what is the greatest of the commandments? They were trying to have him say that one is greater than the other and then the others are null and void and then it doesn't matter. Well, that, that's not what he says. He says the greatest of these is that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. And that that is, I mean, I know this is a bunch of different things that I'm trying to roll into one thing because I can't really can't really <laughs> choose one thing. Um, you, my favorite movie would have been a lot easier. It's The Iron Giant. Done. Right, set. Okay. <laughs> like that's it. Yeah, what's but, your favorite um, movie? Iron Giant. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> done. Um, but yeah, that's 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 the best thing about faith. Move, moving on to. What your project? What, I mean, obviously you've got Pierce in the Darkness at the moment. What what can we expect over the next few episodes? If you've got any plan, I know obviously you were saying before, have you got anything in the pipeline um, currently at the moment that you've got that may be planned? Um, but also the filming projects that we briefly discussed earlier in the episode. Um, what have you got coming up that that people might want to be um, or might want to find you and, and look into? As far as piercing the darkness goes, uh, again, like I said, I, do, I don't really know this week what exactly I'm going to be talking about. I kind of have an idea. I, I, I'm going to bring it up to my friend Tim, who was on that um, that episode on unbelief with me. Um, I'm, I'm kind of going to see if he uh, is willing to record on Friday, and if that's the case, then I kind of have an idea that's kind of a sequel to this episode that I did this past Sunday right. on the differences between King Saul and King David. 
but in a more practical sense, not just in a teaching sense. It's a, it's in a more day to day sense is what we would talk about. But that's one thing I, like you kind of mentioned, I would really like to do some more episodes on how movies relate to faith and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that would be a lot of fun. I just have to find the right people for those episodes. And at some point I'd really love to have my pastor on and just talk about uh, what it means to be a pastor and how you believe you've been called to be a pastor and, and kind of, kind of more of an interview style, uh, style episode in the same vein that I had Keith on when he talked about his campus, campus preaching. Um, as far as film goes, as far as film goes, I don't have anything tangible that I can show you at this point yeah. or send anybody to at this point. Obviously, um, two pilot scripts I'm working on and the film script I'm working on are kind of spec scripts. Right. So they're, uh, I'm writing them on spec on, which means on speculation that eventually someone will want to buy it and make it. Yeah. Um, so I am in communication with a New York producer who has read my feature script and she, uh, she's given me notes on it. So I'm working on it more. Um, that being said, I don't know if anything will come of that yeah. just yet. Um, I would love to make all three of these things that I'm working on someday, but until then, I'm also trying to just work on some, some short films as well. I wrote a short recently, uh, called the wanderer that I'm hopeful to maybe even film in January. That would be re- sometime this winter. I'd really love to film it oh, uh, out here in Montana. And if that's the case, then I'll definitely send that to you. And, um, that'd be kind of a post-apocalyptic short, um, probably no more than 10 minutes. So it, yeah. we'll see. So that, that's fantastic. So, um, Gladly, hopefully, we'll speak again on on the Millennium Podcast. Not to mention it again, um, but the time yes. is now. And part of the we made this podcast, which is coming um, January twenty nineteen. So yeah, so just um, where can we find you online? Uh, well, online you can find me on Twitter at MJ Petty Seven. Um, it's just all one word: MJ Petty Seven P E T T Y. Um, and you can find my podcast, Piercing the Darkness, at Piercing Podcast on Twitter. Um, you can also email us at, at, at piercing podcast at gmail.com. Um, we are on iTunes. We are on Spotify. You can look us up there for sure. Um, and we also have a Facebook page, piercing the darkness podcast. Um, we have a new episode usually every Sunday. So tune in next Sunday for the next episode. Brilliant. Michael. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on Kurt. I really appreciate it. Mm-hmm.